Here are the directions on how to write a formal lab notebook. So what you should have in front of you are your composition notebook, a pen or pencil, and your lab report sheet from class. So the different sections of a lab report are the title, the objectives, the background section which include all of those and we'll go through that in more detail, the procedure which includes that and we'll go through that in more detail, data and results table, equations and calculations which it's worth noting that's the only thing that goes on the left hand side of the notebook, post lab questions, conclusions, and sources of error. So the first thing that we're going to do is write our title section. So I'm going to write this with you. So at this point, I would start writing along with what the video is saying to do. And if you need to pause it to fill in any, any information, feel free to do so. But at this point, you're going to start writing the first part of your formal lab. So here you're going to open your lab notebook. You should have the cardboard or plastic page right here, depending on what type of composition notebook you have. And we're going to start our table of contents. So our table of contents is going to include the title, the date, and the page number. So go ahead and pause the video and fill those things in. Here's a clearer picture actually if you would like to see that a little bit more clearly. And obviously you can adjust the date if it's a different date that you've done the lab itself. The dry versus liquid volume lab can also be called the milk carton lab. So once you've got that filled in, please skip a page. So take that next page and skip that page. Leave that open please. And now we're going to start writing on this side of the notebook. So it's really important that we understand only math goes on the left and only writing goes on the right. And so now when I zoom in with the next picture, it will be shown on this side of the composition notebook. So to continue with writing our title, we're going to include the first title of the lab on the first page here. So dry versus liquid volume. We're going to include our lab partners and we're going to include the date and page number. So go ahead and pause the video again and fill in all of that information. That's worth five points on your normal formal labs. The next thing that we're going to fill in is our objectives. Please notice that I've skipped a line between the section and I've also underlined the section header to help it really easy to help it be really easy to know in terms of what section I'm looking at when I'm grading. And so what you want to do with the objectives is you're either going to summarize the objectives given in your lab handout or you're going to create your own. Sometimes I realize it's hard to summarize them, so do your best and rewrite them as to the best of your abilities in your own words. So if you want to pause and take a moment and write the objectives from the dry versus liquid volume lab, please do so. The next section is the background information. So there's three parts to the background section. The first is going to be a summarized background paragraph. And you're going to get either a background paragraph in your lab handout that you'll need to summarize or you'll get directions on what you need to do in terms of writing that information down. And so what I want you to do is here's an example of showing skip the line, another header. Please take a moment and follow the directions asked of you in your dry versus liquid volume lab about writing what you learned from the lab technique lab. That will count as your background paragraph for this lab. So go ahead and take that moment. Hopefully you've written your background paragraph, and now we'll talk about background equations. So you will need to write all chemical and mathematical formulas in your background section as well. And so in this lab, we don't actually have chemical formulas, but if you did, for example, if we were making water, that would be an equation that you would want to include in your background section, it would be hydrogen plus oxygen yields water. So that would be something you would want to include. So then the other thing that you would want to include are general math equations. And so in this lab, I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly what math equations to include because each of you perhaps will have different ones depending on your procedures and what you chose to calculate and how you chose to go about finding the information for the lab. But for example, let's say that I needed to find the total change in milliliters. I would write the general math formula saying the total change in milliliters is equal to the final milliliters minus the initial milliliters. So notice there's no math here. And let me show you an example here. This example is the percent error equation. You actually all will need to use that equation because that tells you how accurate you were in the lab. And so please actually write down this percent error equation as well as include any other math equations that you used in the lab, even if they're very simple. So go ahead and pause and do that. Hopefully you've included all of your equations. And the last section of the background information is pre-lab questions. We don't have pre-lab questions on this lab, and you'll be, it'll be very clear when you do have pre-lab questions. And so for this point, just skip this section. 
But when you do have pre-lab questions, you'll answer them just like you do the post-lab questions, and you will either answer the question in a complete sentence, or rewrite the question and then answer, answer it. Alright, so at this point I'm on my paper out of room, so I'm going to turn the page. You don't need to turn the page until you actually run out of room. So the next section is the procedure section. So you're going to include the summarized steps, and I would like these in numbered list form, not in paragraph form. You're going to include the materials used in the lab, and you're going to include the safety precautions. And the safety precautions are determined by the materials used. And it will look something like that. And notice that I turned the page, so I included a new page number. And then I underlined the subtitles. And for this procedure, I haven't given it a ton of space, but you will probably want to write the procedures before you write the materials and safety because you're going to have to fill in exactly what you did in the lab. Also notice that I skipped a line there to make it clean. So go ahead and pause the video and add in your procedures, your materials, and your safety. So again, here's a full-size picture of what we were doing. And notice that I'm only writing on the right-hand side of the paper, and I haven't written anything on the left-hand side because I haven't done any math yet. So here's just a full-size version of what my lab notebook currently looks like once I've written the procedures, materials, and safety. So the data and results table are next. So the data table is included, is anything that is included there is anything that's measuring, like any measurements that we've taken in the lab. And so that would be like length, width, mass, anything like that is a data table entry. Results table includes any values that you calculate. So change in anything or change in mass, um, it, anything that you calculate is going to be included in the results table. You can combine the data and results table. You just need to be careful in terms of what you include as your math equations on the left hand side. Please be very aware that you inc include all units in your data and results table. So here's what a data and results table will look like. And so for you in this lab, you'll need to fill in what data you took from the lab, and then you'll need to fill in what results you took from the lab based on your lab procedures and based on your needed calculations. So go ahead and pause the video and fill in your data table and results table, and don't forget to include your units. So equations and calculations, we can finally write on the left-hand side of our papers. So this is the only thing that goes on the left, and we're in the equations and calculations section, including all values that we calculate, even simple calculations like subtractions, must get work shown on the left-hand side of the notebook. Please write the general math equation, like in the background section, and then show your work underneath using the values from your lab. And please also include units. So here's actually a full page, full open notebook version of what it looks like to have math on the left and data and results table on the right. I generally like to wait to write my math equations and my equations and calculations until it's opposite of the data and results table. That way it's really easy to check the work versus the values that you're getting. So here if you notice We've got an equations and calculations title included, and then for the milk carton lab or the dry versus liquid volume lab, you're going to decide what math equations you need to use. But for example, what we have here is just showing an included title, like if we're showing change in mass, we're including a title, so the mass final minus mass, in, mass initial, and then we're showing our work underneath, so let's say it was 50 grams was our final and 40 grams was our initial, so 10 grams would be our change. So 50 and 40 would be what go in the data table because those were measured values. And then the 10 grams would be what would be in the results table because that was calculated. So hopefully that clears that up. So go ahead and pause the video and write your equations and calculations section. So remember when turning the page, don't write on the left hand side. So here's an open page again example as I ran out of room. So I'm going to do my post lab questions on the next page. So post lab questions, you're either you're to answer them, you're either going to answer them in a complete sentence or rewrite rewrite the question and then answer it be below. And you don't need to use complete sentences at that point. I have shown an example of the questions being rewritten and giving space to answer them below. So go ahead and pause the video and answer the post lab questions with either answering them in a complete sentence or rewriting the question.
Hopefully you've written the post-lab questions. So here we're at the conclusion and sources of error section. So the conclusion, essentially what we want to do with our conclusion, and I will help you with this in class, is that we're going to have each conclusion paragraph will be addressing an objective. So for each objective, you're going to make a new paragraph and you're going to state the following. You're going to state the initial statement, you're going to restate the objective, you're going to discuss showing evidence that you addressed the objective, and then you're going to discuss values. So you can kind of read through this a little bit as well. We will practice writing a conclusion and we will do a conclusion writing activity in class before you're actually required to write your own so that you have an example of what exactly is being looked for in terms of writing a conclusion. And then in this case you can just write the conclusion header and leave space so that you can write the conclusion later once you learn how to do it. And then finally sources of error. So in this lab we're giving you sources of error and you will include the three best sources of error in your own lab from the procedures of your own personal lab group. So you want to wait to do the sources of error as well because we're going to check those in class and then you'll include the three best sources of error. But I'm just showing you a picture here of what it looks like with the source of error grid drawn in. Obviously at this point this is probably not enough room to write a good conclusion because you have two objectives for this lab. So there's no way you can write two good paragraphs there. So this is just an example to show you what the source of error grid looks like when written in to your lab notebook. So I would pause and make sure that you've got space to write your conclusion and your sources of error. So what do you need to come ready to class with? So the next class that you meet, you need to do the following. You need to follow through the PowerPoint slides and through this video and write down what was asked of you to write down. You need to fill in in your lab notebook these following sections and then you need to complete the sources of error practice activity on your lab handout sheet. What we will do in class on Friday is we're going to review the sources of error, we're going to enter the best three sources of error into our lab notebook, and then you're going to do an identifying pieces of a good conclusion activity, and then you will start working on your own lab conclusion. Your formal lab notebook is not due until Tuesday. So here I'm just going to show an example, a few slides of an example of what it looks like when we have a full lab written up. So I would skip a page and then I would include a new table of contents title. So there's my title, my date, my page number. And then just a couple of examples in terms of what it would look like if the background section summary paragraph was filled in with a little bit more detail, as well as a background section with a math section here where I've got my math formulas, just my general formulas, again no math included. And then here this is an example of when I would include a chemical equation in the background section. Here's an example of a data table filled out and a results table filled out. No, notice the data table has our units and it's anything that has been measured and our results table also has units and it's anything that has been calculated. And the next slide here shows an example of a results and calculation page filled out. Notice that the equation title is there along with what the equation is and then I showed the work underneath. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more clear understanding of what some of those more confusing parts of the lab look like. Thank you for coming ready to class with all of that completed.